Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Susan and I'm just going to take a little moment here just to show you my resin process. I've had a lot of people ask me how I do my resining and um, so I'm going to do this just more on the process. Uh, I will briefly talk about safety. Um, but I do expect, uh, as we're all adults, to look into the product you're using and all the safety precautions uh, to make it safe for you. Um, so that being said, um, the supplies I use are a plastic measuring spoon, stir sticks, I have uh, a plastic cup, you can use uh, silicone cups as well, like you can get these, uh, they're silicone. Um, when you finished your resining, you can just, uh, when it's dry, like the next day, you can pull out any remainder in there. And they're nice because you can put them inside out. Um, I purchase a lot of these types of things off of a couple of websites. Um, they're quite inexpensive. I can certainly put those links in the description below. Um, but today I'm going to show you just using a regular little cup. I got these from the dollar store. Uh, for smaller projects, I use ones this size. I have to get more of these because I'm out. Um, but these are nice as well for smaller amounts. And what else do I have here? I have hand sanitizer for cleaning. I have paper towels for cleaning as well. I have some uh, hot water or warm water. And for the safety part, I also use uh, a ventilator uh, mask that has the appropriate cartridges for chemical odors. Um, we are working with a chemical here um, and it does have some off gassing. So if anybody has any uh, sensitivities to smells, odors or allergies, um, you know, like you would with uh, bleach, things that have high odor, some perfumes, um, you want to be safe. Uh, but for the sake of this video, I won't wear it today, um, just so you can hear what I'm saying. So to get started, I'm going to put my gloves on for safety. Oops. I already have my little smock on, so I don't get any on my clothing. And I also want to make sure my hair is tied back. Um, and if you have pets or children, I also suggest um, making sure that they um, are not in your area of work. I'm working on a uh, plastic mat so I can clean this afterwards. Um, whatever you're working on, you want to make sure there's no lint dust or anything like that because inevitably it will get into your work. I have two cats so yes most of my artwork seems to have some form of cat DNA in it. I also have um, plastic containers uh, like Tupperware that you can put your work in um, that has a lid. It's really important and uh, I can also show you here in a moment what I place my artwork on. So I'm just going to do, um, I use art resin uh, in Canada here. I get this uh, either on Amazon or I have, I'm in Victoria, BC. I can also order or get it from my art supply stores. Um, Michaels also has their brand. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, I wouldn't say it's there, but this is what they carry at Michael's here in Canada. And I also use this. Um, it has a little bit more uh, odor, um, but uh, the difference they say is that this one, uh, Art Resin, um, doesn't yellow over time, but I'm a little bit apprehensive to say that um, because I believe all resins over time will have a certain amount of discoloring but they claim to have the least and 
I'm not going to go in debating all of that at this moment. Um, <laughs> I have quite a, a big collection of pieces of work that I'm going to do today. Um, so why don't I just show you the process first and then I can talk about um, the surfaces that I'm resining. So you're going to get a resin and a hardener. Some are one to one, meaning one of each, and some are two to one. So just make sure you read, you know, the package and that you're doing it correctly. I also, um, from experience, uh, once I've finished with one container, I put it away immediately because you don't want to do two of the same one by mistake because it will just not cure. So I'm going to be putting it in a warm bath once I've got them both here. So I'm just going to do one tablespoon of each. And you can also use a scale so you get the exact amount each. Um, but I've been doing this for a few years now and I have a pretty good eyeball to um, know I'm very close to exact amounts each. So, I'll get all that out. I don't want to waste any of this goodness. And also, to make sure my measurements are going to stay within this, stay equal. Uh, so I'm just going to wipe out a little bit of the residue. I don't know, you don't really have to, but I like to have more of that accurate measurement. So I'm just going to put the lid back on this sucker because, like I said, you don't want to do two of the same. I'm put that up in my cupboard. And now I'm getting the hardener. And that's just my process. I don't think it really matters which one you pour first. But I always seem to do resin, then hardener. And I have um, arthritis in my hands, so I do find these lids a little hard for me to take off. It hurts my thumb. I just used a little cloth there to give me more grip. Yes, okay, here we go. There we go. And I'll pour that in there. Put that lid on. Now, as I said, I live in Canada, and in the winter it's a little cooler, depending on where you live. I'm lucky I live in BC, uh, where in Victoria, where we really don't have a real winter. It's sort of rain, nine degrees in the winter, seven to nine degrees average. So you want, you want to have your room warm because resin doesn't like cold, working in the cold. So, you know, where you, like a garage, for instance, unless it's a heated garage. So I like to kind of do this as the same way I cook. I like to clean as I go along. So I just took some of my hand sanitizer, put that inside here. And I take my paper towel and I just clean it. Because uh, I'm sure you know, resin is not water soluble. You can't clean your items with water. Uh, never ever put any of this down your sink uh, for a number of reasons, which I don't really need to explain. Obviously, it's chemicals. Okay, and there, it's good for next time. So now I'm going to mix this for three minutes in my water bath. And the reason I do that is I mix slowly. Um, again, as I said, resin likes the warmth. Uh, so it behaves better and mixes better when it's warm. So I'm gonna do this for three minutes. As you can see, I'm not stirring vigorously. And the, the reason I don't do that is 
the faster you do it, it seems to create more bubbles. And then the other part is you can probably see um, resin bubbles come up and out and you don't want to get that in your eyes. So you don't want to inhale them. Uh, so that's why mask is important because um, this is a chemical. Uh, so I just go slowly. I scrape the sides, I scrape the bottom. And so I'm gonna do that for three minutes and then I'm gonna come back to you, but I need to take my glove off here. Okay, so I've stirred this up for three minutes and you can see now it's not cloudy. Um, it's clear, but it does have a few little bubbles in there. And um, so now you can let that sit, sort of rest for uh, 10 minutes or so. And what resting does is it allows the bubbles to come to the surface, hopefully, and um, just go away. And so it makes just a little bit less work for you um, afterwards. Uh, also, the resting allows it to start curing in it, so it thickens up a little bit. So right now it's really, really runny, um, which is, you know, it's fine depending on what you're working on. If you're making pendants or something, uh, you want it a little bit thicker, just so it's, if you're trying to dome, um, it will sit more on in where you put it. So, excuse me, a little bit thicker is better. Also, when you're working on your rocks, if it's too runny, then you're just gonna start getting drips. So I like just to let it sit. If you can, um, go and do something and then come back. I suggest covering it to prevent anything from landing in it. So we're gonna come back in a bit. Okay, I've got a couple more minutes to wait before I'm happy with this. So I thought I would just um, talk to you about the surface that you put your rocks on. Um, uh, after you've coated it. Uh, so resin will stick to things like wire racks or paper, cardboard. So you want to use a surface that's like silicone or parchment paper. Um, parchment paper will leave a, a dull matte finish to the bottom. Um, so whatever you place it on, uh, it will mirror on the back. So you can um, purchase things like these are actually made for e-cigarettes. I'm not sure how they work. I think you put your thing in there and it suctions down and won't move. Um, but these, because they're silicone on the back, um, it, won't, it won't stick. But it still does leave, um, oh, this was my rock I made for my little kitty that passed away. My poor little ginger. Um, but here's an example. So even though it's silicone and it and the molded rock didn't stick to it, it still leaves a little bit of a marking, uh, even if I did it using the smaller amount. And I also get slight drips, um, but these things aren't really a big deal. You can um, purchase uh, from online a craft store. I'm sure, is this pre-adhesive or felt that has a, a, an adhesive back and you just cut out your shape and you can stick it on the bottom. So this is really nice for your wood furniture <laughs> so it doesn't scratch um, and it covers up anything like this. Uh, if you want it to be perfectly smooth on the back, you're a little bit more fussy about that um, where you get a really nice finish like that um, I have started to use um, silicone mats these were um, for making coasters but I noticed on the back it was nice and shiny so if the surface is shiny any silicone product shiny like that it will um it will come on the back 
the things that you want to watch for, uh, where's that rock? Um, so whatever surface you put it on, make sure that it's not bumped up against the side of your plastic container because you can get marks like this. I don't know if you can see that. I did this one intentionally though because I wanted a ledge here on the bottom so the rock will sit. So the painted picture here, scene or whatever, will be viewable this way. So I intentionally put it up against um, the back of the plastic tub so the bottom would have a little spill over and make a little sledge, so like that. So that's one thing. Uh, what else? Oh, molded rocks are regular beach rocks versus molded rocks. Um, I don't recommend putting a molded rock into the plastic tub container um, unless you stick it on parchment or something else because what happens is the paint um, has a bit of give to it so when when it is cured it still will sometimes peel the back off if you don't wait a good couple of days and I'm always very impatient <laughs> so that's why I started putting the molded rocks onto a silicone type surface. Obviously this one won't fit, but it will fit nicely there. Um, and then it just comes off beautifully without leaving any marks. Anyway, so that's that little tidbit. Um, now, this uh, mandala was painted on a pre-resined rock. So if I have um, leftover resin, I will take one of my beach rocks and resin it so that if I, especially if they're a little bit bumpy, uh, then I can just dot on top of a resined rock. And it, it's so nice because you can easily remove boo-boos. Um, and when you do these little swooshes, it just glides beautifully. So it's always good to have a few of these um, sitting aside and I have other tutorials on how to make make these um, and uh, it's listed in my video list there I think it's under dragon eyes on how to get that glitter effect and to get this glitter effect you need a, a resin stone that isn't fully cured but you can check those out later in the meantime, let's get back to what we're here for. And I'm just going to show you how I do my resin. Uh, it's been sitting for about 12 minutes, 12, 13 minutes. And there's still bubbles in there, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, you can take a straw and blow some of them out. Um, so you can see how that reduced some. Uh, but I, um, again, not worried about it because I'm going to be using uh, a culinary tor torch to blow off the bu bubbles. All right. Uh, I want to show you how I do it. So I've make sure I've signed my rocks. These are just little molded hearts that I've... Um, the middle part, I've used a uh, heat, uh, my liquid crystal, which I did a tutorial on in my list there. So the resin is now a little bit warm and you'll start to see. So I kind of just rub it on the back like that. And then I just roll it around like a bar of soap. And that's all there is to it. And you can see the resin is warm because the center is starting to change color the warmer it gets, <clears throat> the more it changes color. So there we go. That's all there is to it. Excuse me, I'm losing my voice this morning. You can always put a little bit extra on top. Look how warm that resin is. And just give it a little extra like that. Isn't that gorgeous? I love the shine. 
So I'll put that on one of my little stands here and we'll go on to the next one. Very simple. Just roll it around. You can also use paint brushes, but um, like I said before, this is um, not water soluble, so you'd have to use um, something to clean it. And I find it, it's just too much work. Or you can just get little disposable brushes from the dollar store, but I find those, the hairs fall out a lot. So that's why I don't do that anymore, because I had to keep picking out little bristles. Look at that, I love the shine. And I think my cat is meowing in the background. See, I got quite a bit still on my gloves. So I may not need to do the back again. Just sort of rub it all in. You wanna make sure your art has been sitting overnight um, so it can fully dry. And the other nice thing with resin uh, is that it just makes the colors just pop. I purchased uh, the Arteza metallic set. Couldn't resist it. And so that's what this has been painted with. I'm just experimenting on, on with them. So it was a pretty good experiment. I liked it. And what else? I'll just do a bigger stone here. So there's a bigger molded stone. And I'm just going to grab a bit more to coat it and then roll it around. This also has the color changing fluid. I was just experimenting doing it with a mandala. You can see the center. Look at that changing color and those dots there. So when this will sit in the sunlight, it'll get different colors. Feels like the resin is not as warm as it was, so. There, gorgeous. Anyway, that's about that process. I'm gonna carry on uh, with my rocks here and I'll come back and show you how I do the torch. Okay, so um, I have finished with my resin and they're all in their little spots. And now I wanna use my torch. Please make sure that you have cleaned your area of anything that is flammable before you use a torch. And you see on this color changing ones, how they change color. So you don't want to hold your torch in the same place. You just want to go over it like that pop the bubbles. It's not meant for anything else other than popping the bubbles. And that's how it's done. I'll put the lids on my containers here to keep uh, any dust and particles of any kind off. And, um, and I also going to keep the room really warm. If you find that you get any retracting uh, after it's sealed, uh, it may be that the room is too cold. Your rock might also have been cold when you're doing your sealant. Uh, and sometimes glitter has a tendency to pull a little bit. So if you keep your room nice and warm and put a good go coat of resin, you'll be fine. And then cleanup wise, I'm just uh, using a Lysol wipe or you can use your alcohol isopropyl alcohol to clean up and uh, ready for next time. I want to say thank you for watching. Uh, I also am doing this just to help share my knowledge. I'm not getting paid nor do I want to be for sharing my knowledge. Uh, I just want to make what I've learned a little easier for everybody else and new people and um, so 
the only thing that I ask is you if you subscribe to my channel it just helps give me motivation to know that people are watching and appreciating the free advice and that's all it is it's just advice doesn't mean my way is the right way uh, we all have to learn and make mistakes and we learn from those mistakes uh, so anyway I hope you guys all have a great day and that's my process all right here it is the next day and I'm just going to show you how easy these are to take off shiny oh, there's a heart these are the color changing ones they're so fun my hands aren't all that warm but they do change there goodness and here's some other little ones that came off real easy I gotta do my nails they're pretty bad today Anyway, there we go. Nice shiny rocks. These ones they come off very easily. So again, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.